What up YouTube, Dave and Jacob here again to drop some more GPU knowledge on you. And this week we're looking specifically at the world's first 7 nanometer gaming GPU, the new AMD Radeon 7 coming next month. It already seems like a lifetime ago, but at its first CES keynote, AMD took the wraps off its next generation of high performance graphics cards and the vanguard for the 7 nanometer gaming GPUs. Yes, the Radeon 7 beans were spilled all over the Vega stage by Dr. Lisa Su. A fitting place for the second gen Vega goodness to see its first consumer card, I'm sure you'll agree. So what's inside it? When's it coming? And how much f should I give about the new Radeon 7? And should we call it Radeon 7, Radeon VAII, or Radeon V2? VAII. VAII, I don't know. I don't know, I don't yeah. think we should call it that, but... All right. The release date has been set for the 7th of February this year. See, 7 nanometer, 7th February, Radeon 7. There's so much subtext around this new card, not to mention the whole VII V2 Vega 2 stuff. It's brilliant. Yeah, some marketing bot at AMD is getting a race for that one. While the new AMD GPU is going to be sold both via AMD.com and its graphics card partners, don't expect to see any non-reference designs anywhere around launch. In fact, some sources have suggested not to expect them at all. What you will see at launch is this sexy triple fan silver shroud. Today, you face the silver shroud. No, no, not that silver shroud, Kieran. This silver shroud. There is expected to be limited quantities of the Radeon 7 at launch, though maybe not quite as limited as the 5,000 units some have suggested. So come the 8th of February, there might not be any left at the 699 launch price AMD has attached to it. AMD has though released a statement claiming that, while we don't report on production numbers externally, we will have products available via AIB Partners and AMD.com at launch on Feb 7, and we expect Radeon 7 supply to meet demand from gamers. There has also been some concern around that 699 price tag too. Given the touted performance, which we'll come to in a second, the RTX 2080 level pricing is probably to be expected, but if there is a limited supply, pricing could rise dramatically and very quickly. Just think back to the original Vega release and the dodgy launch price shenanigans where AMD was reportedly offering rebates to retailers to support a lower price on day one than what was to follow. That scarcely mattered because there was such a scarcity that retailers went way above the subsequent MSRP anyway. Yeah, and there were also rumours back in December that the Radeon 7 was an unfeasible part that cost $750 just to build, suggesting it might end up being a limited run loss leader. The Radeon 7 represents the second generation of the Vega architecture and is more than just a 7 nanometer die shrink of the old 14 nanometer GPU. There are some extra accelerators in there from its pro level Radeon Instinct origins and twice the ROPs of its predecessor. The main crux of this new chip is the 60 compute units at its heart. Inside those CUs reside a total of 3840 graphics core next cores. Though that's actually fewer than AMD shipped in the larger 14 nanometer die of the original Vega, despite there ostensibly being more space. The RX Vega 64 had, yes, 64 CUs, and that means 4096 GCN cores. Essentially, that means this Radeon 7 is simply a Radeon Instinct MI50 without double precision or the Infinity Fabric Link interface. There is an MI60 Pro card out there with the full Vega 20 core and 64 CUs inside it, but it's not looking good for a Radeon 8 to follow the Radeon 7. But the Radeon 7 does also come with twice the VRAM of both the RX Vega 64 and the RTX 2080, with a full 16 gigabytes of second gen high bandwidth memory. The die shrink is what allows AMD to double the memory, giving it more space either side of the chip. It also means it has a full 4096 bit memory bus for a full one terabyte per second of memory bandwidth. The RTX 2080 for comparison has a measly 616 gigabytes a second. Loser, rubbish. The GPU itself is also running faster than its forebear too, something the 7 nanometer die shrink has enabled. The Vega 20 chip inside it will run up to 1800 MHz, while the RX Vega 64 tapped out at 1546 MHz. That clock speed hike is likely why, despite using a supposedly more efficient production node, the Radeon 7 has a slightly higher TDP than the RX Vega 64, with the new card rated at 300 watts against the older chip's 295 watts. But that increased clock speed is also probably largely responsible for the improved performance over the last gen Vega cards too. AMD has released benchmarks which show the second generation GPU in the Radeon 7 offering on average 29% higher frame rates than the old RX Vega 64. Importantly, AMD has also suggested that the card will match or even outperform the competing NVIDIA RTX 2080 in some games. In the press deck, AMD shows the Radeon 7 absolutely smashing the RTX 2080 in Battlefield 5 at 1440p and level pegging with the Forza Horizon 4 benchmark at 4K. 
That's not all going to be down to the higher clock speed, however. The improved pixel pipes will also have a bearing on that too, with the rendering backend beefed up with twice the render output units of the old Vega. Yeah, that should enable the card to take better advantage of the super wide memory bus on offer and deliver a far more balanced version of the Vega GPU architecture than AMD created with its first Vega graphics cards. With the higher clock speed and increased TDP, it seems that AMD is throwing everything it can at Radeon 7 to give it every chance to take on the Nvidia Turing GPUs. And it's going to be interesting to see just how hot this card gets despite that 7 nanometer shrink. It is worth pointing out, however, risking the wrath of rabid AMD fanboys, that these are all very carefully selected benchmarks. So of course they're going to be showing the Radeon 7 in a pretty favourable light. That is exactly what all tech companies do, but Forza, Battlefield and Far Cry are already AMD favouring games. It'll be interesting to see whether the Radeon 7 can maintain the suggested performance lead across our benchmarking suite. While there will undoubtedly be some times where the RTX 2080 gets soundly beaten by the Radeon 7, we're expecting it to be more of a tit-for-tat battle with the Nvidia card taking some wins and the AMD card taking others. So that's the new AMD Radeon 7 then, the world's first 7 nanometer gaming card launching on February 7th. Yeah, it looks pretty decent, doesn't it? Yeah, looks alright. Though again, risking the inevitable AMD hatred, it is worth pointing out that while the proposed performance parity with the RTX 2080 sounds great on paper, that still only means AMD has managed to create a high-end GPU which performs at the same level and price as a GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah, and that means it's taken AMD two years to manufacture a card capable of matching Nvidia's old Pascal GPU. And even though it uses the 7 nanometer node, it still can't come close to matching the aging 14 nanometer 1080 Ti in terms of efficiency either. Yes, AMD fans can now be pleased they can buy a new high-end GPU which might stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with an RTX 2080 in terms of traditional rasterized gaming performance. Well, potentially buy, we're still not entirely convinced about stock levels. But gamers' excitement should be tempered by the fact AMD is still just playing catch-up and not really offering anything that new. Well, thanks for watching and remember all that classic YouTube stuff, the likes, the subscribes, the bell ringing, all that stuff. Yeah, classic. Yep, yeah, see you all soon. Thanks! Bye.